Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this video, we are going to learn about how a stationary electric field affects matter. Woo! Yeah! Wait, what? What was that sentence? Basically why lightning happens. So cool! Okay, this is also called polarization for y'all folks that are like actually trying to follow along in electrodynamics. Not only is this just a really cool concept, but it's also very practical in physics. So why should you care whether you're studying electrodynamics or you're just curious about physics and the world around us? Well, lightning is wild and fascinating as long as you're a decent distance away. Um, but also it can teach us about how electric fields affect all different types of matter. So remember, if you watched the last video, we learned about how uh, most materials can be grouped into two different categories, at least when we're talking about electricity. We have conductors, which effectively have like infinite free charge or electrons floating around in them. And then you also have insulators. And insulators are also called dielectrics because, surprise, surprise, they can actually conduct electricity under special circumstances. I say special and also sometimes scary. Hence, lightning. So let's, let's talk about an analogy that I just find delightful and helpful for me at least. So you can kind of think about conductors as kids running around Disneyland, free to roam, their parents running after them. They, or just hanging out and put a little GPS tracker on the kid, totally fine. Um, or if they're old enough, it's fine. Um, so the, the kids are free to roam within the confines of the park. That's a conductor. The kids on leashes, however, are like an insulator. So the kids can roam around in a radius around the parent. They might be able to stretch the leash a little bit, or if they get really excited, they might be able to pull the parent a little bit. But that's like an insulator. So the charges, or the, the kids or the charges, are bound to the nucleus of um, an insulative material. However, um, we can apply an external electric field, which can do two things to the atom. Um, so if you have, I'm gonna use the Bohr model of the atom. Remember, we have an electron cloud. It's not actually an orbit, but we're simplifying it for understanding purposes. Um, so you have a neutral atom which has a positively charged nucleus and a negatively charged electron cloud around it. Um, if you apply an external electric field, it can do two things to distort the atom. It can stretch the atom and it can um, cause the atom to rotate. So how does this happen? Well, again, you have an external electric field that's going to apply a force to both of these different types of charges. The positive charges are going to want to align in the direction of the field, so they'll be pulled by the force of the field in the direction of the electric field. And the negatively charged electrons are going to be pushed in the opposite direction of the field. If the electric field is strong enough, it'll actually pull off the electron and the electron will become free! Woo! So that kid at the park, they got really excited about the ride. They pulled so hard on the leash and it snapped and now they have become part of the conductor world. Um, so when this happens, this is called ionization. This is, a, this is really lightning. So lightning happens because there is a very large electric field between earth, the ground and the sky and it caught, it's, it's so large that it pulls off electrons in the air and uh, that causes the air to ionize, become a conductor, and then the electrons can flow towards ground, which we see as lightning. Pretty cool, right? Um, so, so yeah, um, in, if the field is not sufficiently strong to pull off the electrons of the atom, um, what will happen is that uh, the atom will uh, rotate or um, stretch until the atom reaches an equilibrium. We like to be stable and uh, neutral. Um, and so the electron might move a little bit. Oh, I'm going to get a different color. Fun. 
Um, so maybe the electron cloud kind of distorts this way and you have your electron of Ahila now, and maybe the atom moves, or sorry, the nucleus moves a bit to the right. And then it reaches this equilibrium point because the electron and the positively charged nucleus are attracted to each other. And so there's um, some energy between that. Um, so they will um, move until they reach an equilibrium with each other that pretty much cancels out this external electric field. Okay, and this is called polarization, um, which basically, let me make sure I get the definition exactly right, um, where the polarized atom has its uh, positive charge shifted in one direction, aligned with the electric field, and the negative charge shifted in the opposite direction. So, cool. How do we measure this? Well, we can use a concept called the electric dipole moment, which has a symbol of P, um, and it is a vector quantity because, again, the electric field is a vector quantity. These uh, different charges will align with that field, and the equation is equal to a constant times the applied electric field. This constant is called... This, I love this, uh, I love this name. Atomic polarizability. Polarizability. Yes, I love this word. So basically this says that the separation distance between the electron cloud and the nucleus depends on the structure of the atom. You can kind of think about like, well, how many electrons it has um, and where the electrons are in the um, electron cloud. And then it's also proportional to the strength of the electric field. So if you increase either one of these or both of them, you will increase the separation distance between the electron cloud and the nucleus. Pretty cool. Okay, so uh, that's it for part one. Um, in part two, we're going to look at how do we actually apply this equation. We'll uh, apply it to a situation where we're asked to calculate what the atomic polarizability is. Oh, love that word. And then in the uh, third video, uh, we will look at uh, what this separation distance actually is um, using, again, uh, this equation um, to help us out. Okay, cool. Thank you for watching. Ooh, sorry, I think I just hit the microphone. I got so excited. Thank you for watching. Um, check out parts two and three, and we'll see you next time. Bye!